Hello. In this lesson, we're going to talk about vectors in three space. This might be a new concept for you. That's why I'd like to take a few moments to explain this concept of three space and the most important thing being to be able to um, represent the three axes of the three space correctly. In the two space, it was very easy the x and y axis, x pointing to the right, y pointing up. But when we work with three-dimensional systems, obviously we have the third dimension, for which we're going to have to have the corresponding axis, z. The challenge is to construct this third axis in a correct relationship with the other two. There are several three-dimensional systems that are being used for different purposes, but we are going to use the right-hand system. And this is given by the right-hand rule. What this rule states is that if your index finger from your right hand is pointing in the same direction as x-axis, while your middle finger is pointing in the direction of increase for the y-axis, then when you roll your fingers index over middle finger closing your fist, your thumb is going to point up, which is the direction of your z-axis, the third axis. So that's basically what the right hand rule states. Now, as you can see here on the sketch, in a more abstract way, if you would uh, rotate x over y, basically in a counterclockwise rotation, that gives you the direction of the z-axis pointing up. This placement of the axis x, y and z, it's a very common way. However, that doesn't mean that you're always going to encounter it this way. So let me take a few examples for you, just for the fun of it. Let's take the axes as you know them from before in the two space, x pointing to the right and y pointing up. Then if we apply this uh, right hand rule and uh, we rotate x over y, that gives us the direction of the z axis pointing towards us. But if you have the x pointing up and y towards you, then z is going to point to the right. What if you had x and x towards you and y is pointing up? Then x over y gives you the direction of z, well, not the way that arrow points, but the opposite. So the z axis is going to point to the left, not to the right. Another thing that you need to uh, be able to do is to represent points in the tree space. You have, besides the x and y coordinates, the z coordinate. So, for example, if you have to uh, sketch the point uh, of coordinates 2, 3 and 6, these are the x, y and z coordinates. I'm going to look on each axis and place those values, each value to the corresponding axis. Try to sketch all the uh, helping lines. So, this is how you determine your P point. In this case, 2, 3, and 6, right? Let's say I, I took these uh, values, just for an example. Extending the knowledge that you already have, so the position vector in 3 space is the same like in 2 space. It starts at the origin, and the end point is going to be to that point in space. The only difference is that we have introduced another uh, coordinate so let me take generically a point P of coordinates x1, y1, and z1. Then the vector v, which is the position vector, or OP from the origin to point P, in an algebraic format is going to have uh, a very similar form that I gave you before for the two space, but with an extra component. So it's going to be x1, y1, and z1. Let me remind you the unit vectors that you also know. Of course, in the three space, you're going to have three unit vectors, each axis having its own unit vector. So I'm going to have i along the x-axis, j along the y-axis, and k along the z-axis. And remember how we can denote these uh, unit vectors using the algebraic uh, vector notation. So i is going to be 1, 0, 0, j represented by 0, 1, 0, and k is going to be 0, 0, and 1. So each unit vector has a magnitude of 1 only for the corresponding component. 
just in case you're gonna see me or somebody else using this notation these unit vectors i j well instead of using i and the arrow on top of it uh, you may see actually the i and instead of the dot you see the arrow without the dot that's probably not a very good idea to use it like that but we all try to uh, save a fraction of a second there if we could anyway if we have the vector v described in an algebraic form such as a b and c then we can express this vector v using the unit vectors such as a i plus b j plus c k or as a sum of the components corresponding to each axis a times 1 0 0 plus b times 0 1 0 plus c times 0 0 1 similar to the two space the magnitude of a vector v is going to be the square root of a square plus b square plus c square I'm not going to demonstrate these things because they are really too similar to uh, what I've done in the two space so using the Pythagorean theorem you can determine this on your own uh, very quickly now let's talk about addition subtraction and uh, scalar multiplication in three space for two vectors a described by a1 a2 a3 and b with components b1 b2 b3 and a scalar k which is a real number by the way don't be confused by that uh, unit vector k along the z-axis and this uh, scalar k letters can be used and reused but don't confuse them the addition of two algebraic vectors in three space is going to be a1 plus b1 a2 plus b2 a3 plus b3 so we add the corresponding components the same for subtraction of algebraic vectors in three space we're gonna have a1 minus b1 a2 minus b2 a3 minus b3 and the scalar multiple ka is going to be ka1 ka2 and ka3 so the scalar is going to multiply each component and uh, please remember that the scalar multiple ka it's a vector collinear with a now if we have two points p1 of coordinates x1 y1 z1 and p2 of coordinates x2 y2 z2 then the vector p1 p2 is going to be expressed in an algebraic format such as x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus z1 this is that vector that's not a position vector it doesn't start at the origin it starts at any point and it ends at any point we can determine this exactly like in the two space only that you're gonna have to apply the Pythagorean theorem uh, several more times and the magnitude for uh, such a vector p1 p2 is going to be again from the algebraic format is very easy to determine that the magnitude of this vector is going to be square root of x2 minus x1 at power 2 plus y2 minus y1 at power 2 plus z2 minus z1 at power 2 now let's look at the properties of vectors in three space and I'm going to start with the properties for addition and scalar uh, multiplication so the commutative property says that a plus b equals to b plus a the associative property says that a plus b plus c equals to a plus b plus c the distributive property says that a scalar multiplied by a plus b equals to that scalar k a plus k b the addition identity says that a vector a plus the zero vector is going to result to that vector a and the multiplication identity says that one times a vector a equals to that vector a now let's reiterate the properties for the dot product even for vectors expressed in three space it's all the same so the dot product between a and b equals to the dot product between b and a the scalar k times the dot product between a and b equals to k a dot product with b or a dot product with k b the dot product between a and b plus c equals to 
the dot product between A and B plus the dot product between A and C. And the dot product between A and U, where U is the unit vector with the same direction as A, that is equal to the dot product between U and A, and it's also equal to A, because the magnitude of this vector is 1, and the direction is the same with A. And these are the properties that are really nothing new, but you should know them nevertheless. And now, let's conclude the lesson with a formula that we're going to use for the dot product between two algebraic vectors in three space this time. So if A is described by A1, A2, A3, and B is described by B1, B2, B3, two algebraic vectors, the dot product between A and B is going to be A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. And I'm going to demonstrate this for you, but it's exactly the same situation like before. As you remember from the previous lesson, so by definition we know that the dot product between A and B expressed in a geometric manner is going to be the magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. I also sketched the C vector which is the difference between A and B geometrically speaking. So let's express that. I'm going to say C equals to A minus B and in the algebraic form is going to be A1 minus B1, A2 minus B2, and A3 minus B3. And I'm also going to use the cosine law to express the magnitude of this uh, C uh, vector. So magnitude square of C equals to magnitude square of A plus magnitude square of B minus 2 magnitude of A magnitude of B cosine of theta. And you see how this expression for the dot product, I recognize it in the cosine law, so I'm going to rewrite that expression and reorganize these magnitudes just like before uh, in the previous lesson. Also put 2 on the right side of this expression. That's going to be the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine of theta. is going to be 1 by 2 times all that expression. Magnitude square of A plus magnitude square of B minus magnitude square of C. On the left, we have exactly the dot product between A and B, as it is given by the definition. So I'm going to replace that. And on the right, I'm going to use the uh, components of those algebraic vectors. So it's going to be 1 by 2. So the magnitude of A at power 2 is going to be A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square. Same for the magnitude square of B, only the components of that B vector and the same for the vector C. It's a sum of the uh, square of the components. I'm going to continue and try to simplify by first expanding the parentheses those squares. I'm going to copy all these terms first of all and when I expand that parentheses I'm going to end up with a1 square minus 2 a1 b1 but with a negative in the front is positive minus b1 square and I apply the same expansion for the other two parentheses and now I notice that I have plenty of terms with a positive and negative values so I can cancel those out so I'm just gonna cancel everything that I can see the result is going to be 1 by 2 times 2 a1 b1 plus 2 a2 b2 and plus 2a3b3. Obviously that 2 is going to factor out and cancel the 2 in the denominator and the final result is going to be just a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3. And this is the formula that I gave you. So it's true. Let's conclude the lesson here. Thanks for watching.